The U.S. Lawyer's Office have been requested by the DOJ to turn over all records about the murder of previous DNC worker Seth Rich. As per a Department of Justice official, the FBI are currently constrained to discharge all records identifying with Seth Rich, which may reveal insight into who killed the previous DNC informant. Lawflog.com reports, in a letter dated October 2, 2017, the head of authoritative interests at DOJ's Office of Information Policy, Sean R. O'Neill, composed that he was coordinating the executive office for U.S. lawyers to look for and create any record shrouded in my September 1, 2017 Freedom of Information Act task. As records are delivered, I'll post them here. For those of you who live in a surrender, or get your news from the New York Times or Washington Post, WikiLeaks author Julian Assange has implied emphatically since a year ago that he got spilled DNC messages from Seth Rich, not Russian specialists. Also, a week ago Congressman Dana Rahrabacher said that Mr. Assange will deliver confirmation in return for an exculpate. Does that imply that Mr. Rich's murder is identified with the spilled messages? I have no clue. In any case, when, as Glenn Greenwald has asked, will it be fitting to begin scrutinizing the official story? Unexpectedly, our legend of the day, Sean O'Neill, is the same Sean O'Neill who requested the FBI to deliver records about the Hillary Clinton email examination after the feds at first revealed to me that her messages were not a matter of open intrigue. As anyone might expect, the U.S. Lawyer's Office gave me a similarly silly reason for withholding the Seth Rich document, that is, in light of the fact that I had not presented a demise testament to demonstrate that Mr. Rich was dead. Remember that I had asked for records relating to the examination of a murder. On the off chance that Mr. Rich's murder was being researched, would that not really construe that he was dead? I thought the appropriate response was self-evident, and I'm happy to see that Mr. O'Neill concurs. In the interim, I documented an indistinguishable FOIA ask for with the FBI, and on September 19, 2017 our old companion David M. Tuff composed that his office had looked through the focal record system and his staff was not able to recognize principal document records receptive to the FOIA. I've played the FBI's FOIA amusement sufficiently long to realize that bunches of records are let well enough alone for the focal record system, like messages, for instance, and I didn't restrict my demand to the focal record system. In the interest that I documented throughout the end of the week, I requested that DOJ arrange the FBI to seek electronic records and printed copies in the Washington field office, where the records in all likelihood would be kept. On the off chance that records are discovered, I presume the FBI will state a law authorization exception, however in any event the FBI will be compelled to recognize that it is partaking in the examination. Maryland a judge orders arrival of records about Hillary Clinton's legal advisors. As was broadly revealed three weeks back, Annapolis Circuit Judge Paul Harris requested the Maryland Attorney Grievance Commission to explore my grumblings against the legal counselors in charge of obliterating Hillary Clinton's messages. To be specific David Kendall, Cheryl Mills, and Heather Samuelson. You can read Judge Harris' request by clicking here. All alone activity. Judge Harris likewise requested the representative to unlock the records from Ty Clevin v. Lawyer Grievance Commission of Maryland. The whole docket is currently accessible on the web.